So question eight has a lot of information on it, which you need uh, to read through quite carefully. If we just tackle it question by question. So the first one, construct an equation for the oxidation of iron in um, step one. Okay, so step one, the student has solid Fe2O3, which is iron oxide, to a solution containing hydroxide ions and bubbles chlorine gas through them, and I make a solution containing FeO42- minus plus chloride ions. That's what I've got so far. Okay. First of all, I've got two ions here, so how many of these must I make? Two. Next thing, let's look, what is the oxidation number of iron there? Three. Plus three. And there he is actually plus, he's plus six. Oh, it's not, oh, yeah. So the difference between there to there is actually, he has gone up by three, but I've got two ions, so overall he's gone up by six. The other thing that's changed oxidation number is chlorine. Chlorine is zero there and minus one there. So each chlorine changes by one. So you have time to six. I've got to have six. So I need to have six chlorides there. And that means I've got three yeah. there. Okay, so the next thing, can you see I've got hydrogen this side? Mm -hmm. I ain't got any hydrogen this side, so I need to make water on can you that. Take, make hydrogen gas? You're not, no, because then you'd be looking at a redox in, involving the hydrogen as well. So, I've made some water. Can I get this to balance? Over this side now, I have got 2 times minus 2 here, which is minus 4, mm -hmm. plus 6 minus there. Overall, I've got minus 10. Yeah. How many of these do I need to get 10 minuses this side? 10 of those. So, the next thing is how many waters must I make? If I've got 10 hydrogens there, what number do I need there? Five. Five there. And that's how you... So you're balancing it for electrons. Um, the next one is actually easier. An ionic equation for the formation of barium ferrate 6 uh, in step 2. So I'm adding barium ions, barium 2 plus aqueous, to um, ferrate 6 ions which are we, what we know are FeO42 minus ions, to so just give me barium ferrate solid. So that's relatively straightforward. Yeah. That's it, yeah. Okay. If we just keep this up, the next question is going to ask me, in step three, what is a reducing agent? Um, so what is a reducing agent? Well, the reducing agent is actually going to be iodide ions and why iodide ions is because they have donated electrons to the barium ferrate over here so you need to include that they're iodide ions because they've lost electrons to FeO42 minus right so this is your calculation now I've written the equations up on the board um, as they appeared on the previous page. <laughs> so the solid sample of barium ferrate is impure. Calculate the percentage by mass of barium ferrate in the 0.437 grams of solid formed in step two. Okay, so if you look back, they told me a volume and a concentration of solid thiosulfate. So what can I work out first of all? That one, yeah. I can work out moles. S2O3 2 minus that is going to equal concentration times volume over a thousand. So 0 0.1 times 26.4 divided by a thousand that comes to 2.64 times 10 to the minus 3. Now, I want to relate that to the moles of barium ferrate 6. Let's go through this. One of those gives me one and a half 
of iodines, but I've only got one iodine there, so what do I need to times this equation by? If I times it by two, I'd end up with two iodines there, and then I've got one and a half and a oh. two. So I need to times it by one and a half, cool. If I do that, two times one and a half is three, that becomes one and a half, that becomes one and a half, and that becomes three. Now, I can relate thiosulfate sulfate to bearing ferry. What is the relationship between those two? Moles of BaFeO4. For every three of those, I only had one of those. I'm going to divide by three, aren't I? Oh, yeah. Because I'll work out the moles of that. So moles of that is 2.64 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 3. That gives you 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 4. I've got moles. What can I do? Uh, I need to find out the mass. So if I work out the molar mass, it's going to be 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 4 times the molar mass is 257.1. That actually comes to 0 0.226 grams. And therefore my final percentage is 0 0.226 over the, the uh, impure sample times 100, and that gives you 51.8%. Right, the killer blow. So here we go. The reaction forms a gas with a density of 1.333 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per centimeters cubed. We can use that to find the molar mass of the gas because we know that one mole of any gas has a volume of 24,000 centimeters cubed. So if I, in my gas, I have 1.333 times 10 to the minus 3 grams in 1 centimetre cube. If I times that number by 24,000, it comes to, so I times it by 24,000, that comes to 32 grams. That's telling me the molar mass of that gas is 32, so what could it be? Well, looking at the elements that I've got involved, it's likely to be O2. Mm -hmm. What is a precipitate? An orange-brown precipitate. Oh, it's going to be FeOH. Three, yeah, iron three hydroxide. Right. So I know I'm going to start off with FeO four two minus plus water. That gives me oxygen gas, and it also gives me iron hydroxide. If I do my oxidation states of iron, each iron changes by 3, and each oxygen changes by minus 2. Because that's minus 2, and that's 0. Right. The thing we need to remember... Well, first of all, I want these two numbers to balance, don't I? So if I times that one by 2, I'm going to times that one by three. Is that two plus two as well? Sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I'm by two now, isn't it? Yeah. So I need to times this guy by two and that guy by two. How many oxygens must I end up with here? How many oxygens from this side to that side must change oxidation state? Two. Three. <laughs> three. So I need a total of three oxygens in oxidation state yeah. zero, which is one and a half. But those oxygens could have come from here 
as well because they change. So I need a total of one and a half oxygens there. The final thing I need to do is add in my, to balance this up, I've only got, well I've got four minuses there, but I've got no minuses there, so I can balance this up by adding four H pluses there, and that will mean four H plus plus two hydrogens here works out to give me my six oxygens plus hydrogens that side as well.